Yo, what is going on, guys? We are back with another episode of Mogcast. Episode number 46. We are here with the one and only Germer, the uh, also known as like the owner of Young LA, aka Gary. Yeah. yeah. This, this is like a long time coming. Um, I've been asking you to come to Houston for a minute now, and stars have aligned, and you know, it's like business trip. So we yes, decided sir. to get him on the pod. Super excited to just talk and business, and huh? This is his first, yeah, business. This is <laughs> his first business. Trip. Minutes, we have business. this Friday today, so it's still a weekday. We have some business to do, definitely. But um, today is the first time that he's ever done like any long form content. So hopefully, hopefully you guys can get to learn something about him. Definitely, I'm low key kind of nervous, but I'm very excited as well. Like we're just waiting for the last outs to hit. Yeah, but <laughs> definitely, we took a little shot, but yeah, it's kicking in. I feel yeah. good, so I'm excited. Oh, yeah. I'm a, I'm really happy you're here, dude. Seriously, yeah, thank you, um, bro. Yeah, I'm really happy to be in Houston finally and meet, meet everyone, the boys man. and see. I feel like I, I've been to this house already, but it's it's cool to be here. I love it. Yeah, that's fucking dope. But I like first question because I think everybody like wants to know. Yeah. Um, like how did how did Young LA start or what was like the first product? Well, I have what? to wear them. You don't have to wear them. You no, can no. wear. I usually wear one ear on, one ear off. Well, I okay. think should we do first question? I want to know your upbringing. Like what, okay. what was that like? Uh, my upbringing. So I was born in India. So I was born in 1992. So I'm 30 years old right now. I was born in India. I moved to the U.S. when I was 10. Lived in New Jersey for about four years. Damn, yo, shout out New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, shout, shout out New Jersey. Shout out New Jersey. Jersey. I had no idea you lived in New Jersey. Wait, so why, yeah. why did your parents want to move out? So my grandfather was actually lived in the U.S. since 1986, I believe. And mm -hmm. he was here for a long time. Me, him and his, my grandmother, who I still live with, actually, we, he, she, he was here. And, like, yeah, he just want, thought, like, we, it was, like, a way better future for our family to be in the U.S. So he really wanted us to move. My dad actually had, like, a, we, were really, we were doing good in India, but, and then he wanted us to move. And well, I've seen videos. You showed me some videos of what your house looked like back in India. Yeah. And it didn't. I, I'll just be straight up. It didn't look like that's living good. So yeah, what was, we were like like a middle class family in India, but uh -huh. we we're still not like. And you India know, standards is that good? India, it was like it was India is like you know poverty is like pretty bad. So we weren't like you know like loaded by any chance, but we you know we weren't we weren't like terrible. I mean, we had enough money to come to the U.S., which means a lot, you know, like because mm -hmm. sure. when you convert rupees to dollars like it's hard so yeah yeah we, we were we were doing okay and my my grandfather was here and stuff so i lived in india for until i was 10 and so i moved my grand it was like my grandfather's goal that the kids will have a lot better future in the u.s so that's why we were like all right come well, that happened yeah that's wait so dope. what what did your parents do for work once they got here uh my dad actually just worked at the shop in new york um he was making like 400 dollars a week something like that and just like it was like a gift store, um, and then he f eventually like partnered up with that person and also did like a, a clothing business and like souvenirs and stuff like that for New York. And we lived, we were like really close to New York City, so we did that for a while. And it was cool, um, but yeah, I lived from my fourth grade to seventh grade. I was in, I was in New Jersey. It was, it was a really did good you, experience. I actually learned how to hustle in New Jersey because like, you know, it's, life is way different out yeah, there coming to yeah. LA. And I actually helped me and Robbie. We helped. So Robbie's the other young LA partner. Yeah. A lot of people don't Shout know. Shout out Robbie. That. He's sitting right here. Yeah. Shout out Robbie. He's right Robbie. there. But uh, he's my brother. Uh, pretty much I live with that guy mm. like all day long. And, you know, we run the company together and all that stuff. So yeah. it's dope. And yeah, uh, my dad worked. At, he, he eventually started his own business in New, in New Jersey, just selling like souvenirs in New York and stuff like that. And we had, I actually helped him a lot back then because uh, he moved to California a year before us. But we had to wrap up the business because he found a good opportunity to be in California. How old were you? I was in seventh grade. And, and so was, you, you guys were in charge of like... We were, we were in charge right? for a year to finish, wrap up the business, like sell out the leftover inventory. Mm -hmm. So Robbie would actually go to New York, get orders uh, for the, like in wholesale orders. Like he would just write stuff down on paper. And actually I would, we had a little backyard like guest house and all the inventory for his business was there and i would like pack everything and do all that stuff we had we eventually got like a little warehouse too but that's kind of where i started like being an entrepreneur so that was like the, mm, dude, that's fucking dope yeah i was, had i had no idea this is the first time i'm hearing like, this yeah, yeah so seventh grade that's when i was like okay this is how a business ran and like my whole life i was like i knew i wanted to run a business eventually and like my dad like really distilled that into you know me and mm -hmm. robbie and it's like all right i was like i think i can do this like you know i'm I'm pretty good around people and like I'm a people's person and stuff. So I was like, I think I have it in me. So it was cool. So when he moved to California, it took a year. So what, what, what were you expecting when you went to California? 
Like, did he tell you, like, yo, we got, like, this this lined up? Or was it just, like, fuck it, let's just run that? So, the business in New Jersey actually was not doing that well. And then he got a, op- a job opportunity to be in California. And it was, like, a lot more money and stuff like that. So, we he took it. And then, mm-hmm. so, when I moved here, I was, like, I actually was pretty sad to leave New Jersey. Because I finally, like, you know, started to make friends. Yourself. and Establish yeah, myself. Yeah. Like, my English was getting better. Yeah, and yeah. Stuff so, like that. When, so you, when you moved over here... Did you know English back in India, like, pretty well? So, in India being colonized by the British, you know, like, everyone in India speaks some sort of English. Uh-huh. Like, it's not that bad, but, like, obviously, the Indian accent is pretty bad. So, when I came here, like, it, I knew English decently. They put me in ESL classes, actually, All right. my first couple of months. It's, it's a funny story, actually. So, I was in ESL uh, for literally two weeks, um, and I had my dad take me out because I used to love playing basketball in India, and, like... Mm-hmm. It was either I would go to PE because PE was only two days in India. I mean, in New Jersey. And so it was either I go to PE or I go to my ESL class. And I was like, I don't want to take ESL because I wanted to play basketball in PE and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I had my dad come to school, take me out of ESL. And actually, that was like the best thing for me because I actually like hung out with American kids. And my English got way better because I was like talking to them. Mm. Versus in ESL, it was a bunch of other Indians. Right. And I was like, my English was only going to get worse (laughs) over there. So it was cool. Uh, yeah, like, that's actually dope because like you learn you you learn more just playing PE playing ball exactly rather like, than like talking a teacher. to kids yeah. and instead of like because my, my I had a good, better foundation than a lot of the other kids already and so it was cool it was a lot it was a lot easier and like I made friends I'm like you know I'm a social butterfly at the end of the day so like I made friends pretty easily so it's cool so Wait. what 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 job opportunity was it that your dad had over in California because that's like a big move yeah so there was these gift stores called Oz they're they're not an hour anymore, but he got an opportunity to be their district manager for these three stores. And um, that's he took that opportunity, ran with it. They actually started um, an Amazon business while he was there, like when Amazon was kind of coming up, like third party sellers on Amazon and stuff. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the foundation of Young L.A. too. like, I don't know, a lot of people know, but Amazon was where we first started. And he learned a lot of that at his work, how like selling on Amazon. And he would always talk about his you know work at home and that's kind of when we started going into business. I was like, yo, Amazon could be a good opportunity for selling stuff. So, yeah, so he that was a big opportunity for him, and he took it, and I'm glad he did because California is way better than New Jersey, especially where we lived. It was kind of in the ghetto and stuff, and, like, houses were tiny, and we finally moved mm-hmm. here. Like, we had an apartment at first, lived in an apartment for a couple of years, and then finally got our house, but it was, like, a small house. Um, but I love California compared to New Jersey. Like, the weather, people, like, you know, I think New Jersey has its good parts too, but where we lived, it was it was in that night. So mm-hmm. you yeah. said you said you learned how to hustle there. Like, what was what do you mean that, by that? Uh, the business that was a big part of it. Like, you know, going like Robbie would get orders, and I would just like pack stuff, and then we would actually do deliveries together. And like, so you were like you were like ten, eleven years old at this point. Yeah, I was like when we finally started doing the business stuff. I was like twelve, and like like getting money from these people, it was a pain in the ass, like the wholesalers and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a pain in the ass. So like learning that and just like getting paid and making sure, cause we would give them stuff for credit, you know, and then we getting paid or just packing orders. And honestly, just, just like getting accustomed to the American lifestyle. That was like, kind of like, you know, it was to be as hustle involved in that. Cause like making friends and stuff like that, it wasn't really there, you know, earlier. So that's, that's, that year, those few, like, four years of New Jersey, like, really changed me. So, I was like... Yeah. So, which excited. which part of California did you move to? Uh, I was in L.A. Oh, but, really? Uh, yeah. So, you've been in L.A. basically since you were in, like, seventh, eighth grade, So, right? eighth grade, I went to L.A. in the Valley, where I still live. Um, and, yeah, we've been in L.A. the whole time. And I went to school in Santa Barbara, like, college. Mm-hmm. So, I moved out of L.A. for that. And then lived in Irvine for a little bit, which is or in Orange County. But pretty much been in SoCal since eighth grade so you were doing you kind of learned that hustle like entrepreneurship mindset when you were in new jersey uh but it's because your dad left you kind of had to take things over when you moved to la did you still have any of that in your life or was it more just school oriented so i was always like i gotta make my own money i didn't like asking parents for money (laughs) or just i was like always like i was always a hustler so actually in eighth grade yeah um i would i would get uh i would fill up my backpack with like 80 cans of soda. <laughs> you were one of those kids, yeah, bro. Yeah, so I was one of those kids. So You'd I would sell them? I would just, like, get my refrigerator completely packed with 80, like, 
30 to 40 cans of soda and then just go to school with like hunched over <laughs> with like a big ass backpack. Teachers and are then, like, what the fuck are you carrying around? Yeah. It was books. And then I would just like kind of leave them in my locker. My locker was under the shade. So they would actually stay cold throughout the day and just keep going and refilling. But like, dude, I was buying like a can for like 25 cents, selling it for a dollar. And I was like, I was making money. I was like, at one point I was like, dude, I got like hella money. I was buying shoes. I, I was doing whatever I Damn. wanted to. And I was like, that, that was, that was like the initial like hustling for myself and being an entrepreneur and stuff. And it was, it was cool. I don't know. I continued doing that in college, selling chocolates, doing this shit, doing yeah. that. I was smoking weed in high school. Bro. Yeah, bro. So actually in uh 10th grade, um, when the 3GS came out, remember the iPhone 3GS? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 So I would actually buy it from people for cheap and then put a bunch of them together and sell it to these uh, Asian wholesalers who would send it to China. And I would make like 50 to a hundred dollars on iPhones. And I started doing that in 10th grade. Like, I would like drive around all of LA buying uh, cell phones and stuff and then sell it to like these wholesalers. And like, so I, that was another business that I did in 10th grade and just continued doing stuff like that. Like for a while I did like cell phone cases on Amazon, all, th all in high school. So, so how, did, cool. how would you find these people that were like selling these phones? Would you just go on like Facebook marketplace or something? Craigslist. Craigslist, Craigslist? Was, was popping back then. Damn. Everything was, yeah, yeah, Craigslist was huge. So I did that for a while and like, the reason was like these people were willing to pay more because I was able to sell four or five at a time mm -hmm. and they didn't have to run because they were doing the same thing. But I was like doing the busy work for them. I had actually a minivan in 10th grade Ford Winster and I would just run around, you know, getting these cell phone cases and do that. And it was yeah, that was like that was a really cool experience. I remember this one time I had a buyer and a seller at my house at the same time. And like I had to change my address, get them to a different street and buy it. And it was like it was cool. But. Yeah, that was like the foundation of what I'm doing today, I guess. That was cool. So this was in 10th grade. Were you still like, did you still have motivation to try in school? Or were you more like, fuck this, because I'm making money on my own. And like. No, um, I always like was like, I wanted to go to college, like get a degree and all that stuff. And I'm still by that. Like, even though like business is amazing, like I still think college degree is very important. Um, you know, Talking I, to do dropouts right now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You, you were actually the first person that I, that I actually recommended to drop out because it like, for me, it was like, you had such a big opportunity in front of you. And I was like, you need to f put your full focus. But yeah. other than you, like every other person, I'm like, yo, stay in school, finish school. Cause uh -huh. I, I still think, I think school, like college is way more than just the school experience. Like I think the experience of living with friends and just like you learn like networking and all that stuff. Like I'm still like really, really good friends with all my college homies. Mm. Like, you know, we're still like a family and like those are some of my best friends still. So I still recommend going to college. Like, you know, it's like, it's okay to do side hustles and stuff like that in college. And I think doing other things, but I still recommend going to college, but unless you come up with like a crazy opportunity where you're like, yo, like this is what I want to do. And you know, then you drop out and then yeah. like, you know, leave. But I think getting a college degree is never going to hurt you. So, and I think it's a lot more than just the school aspect. It's the aspect of being around other people, networking, learning from, like, there's a lot of shit that I learned in college that, like, it wasn't taught through school. It was taught through my friends, you know, mm -hmm. and, like, I like, guess. Yeah, That's what like, I feel like college is. Like, it, it's, a lot of it has to do with just, like, making connections and also building exactly. your character and how yeah. you, sp you speak to people. Yeah. And, and yeah. like, it's, it's less, I, well, it should be about the books, but I think, for me, it was less about the books and more yeah. about just, like, for sure. talking to people. And, Definitely. And, and learning people's personalities. Yeah, like, I learned, like, like when people drink and they get hiccups and stuff, right? Like I have this trick where people lose their hiccups. Like you walk backwards with your, with your like nose closed and shit. Or just like, but every time I do that, like people random, are always like random trick, random trick. Right. But people are like, where'd you learn that? I was like, college, bro. Yeah. Or like when you get sand in your eye, like how do you take it out? Yeah. Like dumb shit like that. Right. Like, like learned it in college, you know, you so learned how to get sand out of your eye and how to get rid of hiccups. <laughs> and it cost you $40,000 a year. I think it was worth it. The one, so many, so many more of those, you know, so the one cool. thing that I've used or that I learned in college that I use now was, is Excel because, and that's only because of you. Like, Excel is because amazing. I learned Excel in, in business uh, 101. Yeah. And so now, like, because I'm, I'm doing work for you, it's like now I get to learn, or now I actually get to apply that yeah. to Excel. So it was actually, honestly, it felt really good. Yeah. Knowing that, like, I learned this in college and now I'm now using it. Yeah. Now I'm actually using yeah. it. It felt like it was like something I've never experienced. I was you like, actually remembered how to use it all these yeah. years later. It kind of yeah. comes back to you. So mm. I actually, something that I was like kind of pissed about. My school actually didn't, even though I, I was, so I did account, econ and accounting. So I double majored in econ, econ and accounting in college. And they didn't really teach us Excel as well as I think they should have. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually learned, so I, as, uh, so 
going into college story, like, you know, so after high school, college, obviously. So um, at first I was like, I want to be an entrepreneur and do all that stuff. But then eventually um, I got into a lot of the, my friends and stuff. So I, I wanted to do econ, but they were uh, they were also doing like double majors, like econ and accounting. So I ended up doing accounting because there was like more job opportunities and stuff like that. So a couple of years into college, I got like brainwashed to thinking like an accounting job at these big. So there's a for accounting, there's a thing called big four which is these big four firms that you want to be at after you graduate from an accounting degree, which is one of them is Ernst & Young, which I got a job at after college. And I was like, the day I got like my full-time offer, like I was so excited. But then looking back, I realized like I, in college, I got brainwashed to thinking like that was the best thing I could do for myself. Mm -hmm. So like first year out of college, I got a job, 57,000 57, K. And I was like so excited, like 57,000 K a year. And I was like, yo, this is the best shit for me. And like, and then eight, so that's actually where I really learned Excel was working at Ernst & Young, which was like a big, big firm. They have like, like I don't know, like 400,000 people across the, across the world that work for that company. So like, so like, but like the, you know, at Ernst & Young, you just work there for years and years and you like slowly grow your pay and stuff like that. And so I wanted to be a CPA too and stuff like that right after college. But eight months into college, I was like, dude, fuck this. Like, this is not what I want to do. Or eight months life. into the, into the job, eight yeah. months into the into job. The job sorry. Like, fuck it. I was like, dude, I do not want to do this. Like, this is the like, I was literally, so I was an auditor for Ernst and Young. So I was pretty much like looking at people's taxes and like yeah. making sure what they put uh, in you there. You were an op, bro. Yeah. You, you were, were an op. op. Fuck, yeah, bro. fuck auditors. <laughs> so I was literally just checking, like if they were saying like, this is true, like, you know, is it actually true? And just like checking all their shit. And like eight months into it, I was like, dude, like, if, if this is what I'm going to do with the rest of my life, like, fuck this. Like, I'd rather kill myself. Like, yeah. like all yeah. day long, just looking at spreadsheets. And yeah. it, it taught me a few things working at EY, like how, like, a corporate world works. And, like, I definitely implied those things into Young LA, like, after, like, especially where we are now. And, but it, it like, those few months were just, like, terrible. Like, I was, like, literally depressed. Mm. And then finally, um, so Robbie was doing Young LA stuff, like, we had started our eBay account and he quit his job before I did. And so we were just doing selling random shit on eBay. We were selling like Tupac shirts, uh, Vans, Converse's, like blank tees, Biggie shirts, just like vape pens. Actually, well, how too. are you making how are you making like money on that? So we would just buy wholesale wholesale buy from downtown L.A., like buy 12 pieces, buy 24 pieces of random things that we saw that could sell on eBay. And we were just buying that together. Me and Robbie were doing that. And we were just, whatever it was, like it was vans or like whatever we saw a good opportunity because uh, downtown LA has like a crazy hub of like fashion stuff. So whatever we wanted to buy, Robbie was buying it. And then we would uh, sell, put it on eBay. Like I was doing a lot of like the listing work on eBay. And then whatever would start selling, we would keep buying more and more. And we did that for a long time. So that was like the foundation of Young LA. That's when 2000, like Tupac shirts, bro. Tupac and vans. Shirts. What's yeah. it, what was this, 2014 or something? 2015 is okay. when that kind of started. So you were still working your accounting job and you were doing this on the side? So in college, I was doing this on the side. When I did the accounting mm. job, they were making me work like, bro, I was working like 70 hours a week, like <sighs> insane hours for $57,000 yeah. a year, which is like terrible. And there were like, there were days I was working like seven, it's like 70 hours a week. So I was like insane. And like, I didn't mind the hours cause I still work those crazy hours now, but it was more of the work was just so dry. And then, so I, during yeah. those couple of like, those like few months, I didn't really, were able to be too involved on like the eBay stuff, but Robbie was kind of carrying that. And then I realized I was like, dude, this is not going to happen. Like, I don't want to do this. And then I quit my job, which a lot of people were like, dude, what are you fucking thinking? Like, like getting, all, your, all your accounting homies, all my accounting <laughs> homies, all my mom's friends or like all like the older Indian people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all the older Indian people were like, dude, this is the best you can do thing for you. Cause like Indian mentality is like a lot of like, oh, get a job. You know, like this, what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. College hey, job, college job that forever. It's like exactly. that for most immigrants, I think. Exactly. And it's like a very safe route and it works. It works for most people. Right. But I was like, there's no, like, oh, I remember like when I was quit, like about to quit, like I talked to my mom about it. My mom was like, dude, all my customers, cause she, she used to run like a little salon at our house. She was like, all my customers saying, like, this, you're making a big mistake. And, like, my dad always, like, really, really supported me. Like, yo, mm. this is not what you want to do. Like, he was, because he, he was an entrepreneur in India. And so he was, like, and, and in New Jersey, too. So he was, like, quit it. Like, I, I support you. Like, you, you're made for bigger things. So I quit my job, and then I joined Robbie completely full time. And that's when stuff, like, really started to grow. Um, but for a while, Young LA was not even a thing. So Young LA. Um, Wait, really quick. Because you're talking about your dad. Um, I had, I texted Joe and I asked him to bring some lemon soda here. 
Oh, so sick. yeah. So Joe, if you don't mind grabbing some of those. So his dad actually uh, runs a glassware company. Thank you. Um, I yeah, appreciate nah, that, right? yeah, of he course. Would really dude. appreciate that too. So I'm gonna pour my yeah. seltzer in here. So yeah. it's like a bunch of dope glassware. I actually use it. I have. I use the skinny ones for like the mojito. Like yeah, you know yeah, the yeah. mojito one. I use those to make mojitos. But I don't really know how to make them, so I just fucking smash shit together. Look at so, that. So what was works your, perfectly? What, what was your dad doing in India for? Like you said, he was like entrepreneurial. In yeah. India. So we had there? our own um, shop. Um, it was like in India. They call it a shop. It was like kind of like a deli, and we were. He was just selling random things, uh, you know, like bread, like pastries. Mm. Um, we he because my my grandfather was here too. He would actually we would come visit. So my first time I came to the U.S. it was ninety seven just to visit. Um, and we made a few visits, so he would get some stuff from here, like, so it was, like, exclusive, like, American stuff, and we would sell it at the shop, but it was a lot of, like, chicken, like, raw chicken, like, just random things, like, in Indian, it was, like, a little, like, probably, like, 300 square feet, like, shop, but it was, like, it was always popping, like, my, it was, it would always do well, and, like, you know, like, sandwiches, or, like, my mom was involved in it, too, just, like, random things, and he was doing that for a while, um, pretty much, like, all of his, like, 20s, uh, or even 30s, <coughs> so that was, like, so he's always been like an entrepreneur. My dad was always an entrepreneur. So when he saw that in me too, and when I was like, he was like, oh, you're, you're going to do this job. Like he was happy for me because like it was like a very prestigious company to be at. But then once I like started talking to him about like, yo, like I don't really like working here. He was like, yeah, dude, you remember yeah, way better things. Shit. Like fuck <laughs> this. Like, you know, and like, thank God, like I didn't listen to a lot of people because my goal for a while was like, I'm probably going to work there for like five years, get my CPA and then maybe do something on my own. But if I would have waited those five years, like, I feel like I'd be, be so, so yeah. behind and like miss that timeline of like trying to do something big, you know? So yeah, I'm glad I li didn't listen to a lot of the, most people told me not to leave, but you know, my dad supported it. The and same my heart thing supported. as me. Yeah. I feel like you, you two, and then Jordani were the only ones being like, yeah, fuck college, bro. Fuck and college, like everybody yeah. else was being like, I don't know, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, bro. I was on FaceTime with you. I was like, drop out, drop yeah. out, <laughs> drop out. I know. So. <laughs> I was Cause usually like I tell people like have a backup plan, right. In mm -hmm. life. And that's important. Right. So like, I do still have my college degree, but with you, like, like just the first few months you being in young LA, the potential that you had, I was like, dude, this is, I had never seen anything like that before you got, I still remember the day you signed, you got 90 orders on your first day, like sales wise. And I was like, damn, what yeah. the fuck? Like, cause yeah. like at that time, like none, like all over, none, no, no, no other athlete was like that, you know? And just to see that, I was like, dude, you gotta, you gotta, fully put all your like eggs in this basket like make content like do this every day and like so i supported that completely and i'm glad you listened yeah, yeah plus me i mean me and sushi said plenty of times in the podcast that like college is always a backup plan mm -hmm. and if you want to take a gap year quote unquote and see if it works out you can always go back to college but you can't go back to opportunity so oh, if yeah. opportunity Facts. presents itself that's yeah. like a one-time thing yeah but college it's like if shit really doesn't work out and you are broke as fuck and nothing that you're doing is working, mm -hmm. you can always go back and be True. like, I'm back in college now, yeah, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's and what he, I told my mom. Cause I was like, yeah, I'll go back in a year. But in my head, I was like, bro, I'm not fucking going yeah. Wait, back. so with you, were, was your, was it kind of the, the, the same in terms of like your dad supported it, but your mom didn't? Cause my your dad mom was is more, like, my dad was more like, like whatever, like if it works, it works. If it doesn't like you fucked up, it's like kind of like learn from your own mistakes. Yeah. Like I'm not going to tell you what to do. Cause I was, you know, yeah. 19, 20 years old at the time. Yeah. But my mom, yeah, she was upset. Cause she was, she was in, she's first generation American. Yeah. Yeah. So Did she actually, and, and Asians are me. very like, yeah, you know, academic, like yeah. get your fucking degree. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I support that. It's funny. Your mom just DM me like a, a month ago on my personal account. And she was like, thank you for like taking care of Sush and all. It was like the sweetest awesome. message. That yeah. I ever got. Like, I almost wanted to like tear me up a little bit. Now, like, yeah, now she's good. So, yeah, now she's happy. Yeah, so now like, she's fucking happy. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. But for him, it was like he had so much momentum going into like when he was in college. I was like, bro, if you waste your time on school right now, like the momentum's not going to stay, you know? So, like, mm -hmm. you can't focus on two things at once. You, you have something that most people don't like, you know, in the fitness industry, like 99% of the people don't make money, you know, because they're like, there's so many of these kids that are trying to do big things, but. They don't like the personality on the camera. It's not something you can like get over time yeah. or like dwell you up. Can't you, know? train it. You, can't you can't train it. You can't train it. Like he had that. Like he was funny on camera from day one. Like I watched his videos like, bro, this guy is funny. I remember the, the first video you I watched. It was like you trying out like a bunch of different like protein bars. And I was like, mm -hmm. I was entertained the whole time. And yeah. I was like, dude, this is good content, mm -hmm. you know? And like, I was like, dude, leave your fucking like drop out right now. <laughs> like do this full time. And, and I like it was it was 
obviously huge for young LA too. So I was like, bro, it's going to go hand in hand. And so mm-hmm. I was like, I'm glad. I think I, I think I signed with y'all when y'all had like 40 or 50 K on IG. Yep. And then I had like only 13 K on yep. IG. And then I had, I had like done that post where I was like in my LA fitness back in Georgia yep. and I was like wearing the uh, superlative joggers mm-hmm. and the bamboo tank, the teal bamboo Man, tank. You remember, I remember the fit? Yeah, I remember. I the remember that fit. post. I remember the exact caption. Young LA, email me back. Yeah, and <laughs> I'm pissed though because I I went back because when I got when you guys signed me, I like changed the caption of it. Yep. But like now, when you go back, I changed it back to what it was, but it says edited like four months uh, ago or whatever. Yeah. So it's not like <laughs> it's not as sick. So if you guys go back to the post, it's, it it'll say edited because I changed it back to the original yeah. thing. That post but, is like legendary yeah, so i think it it'll always go down in history definitely, that shit changed my life 100 percent. and honestly i see so many people doing that now like tag young la or spam young la and you were to me you were that first person to be like you know using your followers to help you get a sponsorship mm-hmm. and like so many people copy that now you know and like try to do the same thing and like sometimes it work, and it, it's worked for other people too like we've we've you know gotten people on the team based on spam tag if we're getting like tagged like Three, four hundred times in a day, like I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go look at yeah, it. Yeah, like you know? that shit so, shows up on the notifications. Exactly. Yeah, but so I think like, it's different now because ninety nine percent of the people that are doing that tactic just wanna get on Young LA because of the hype. Yeah. But I think with him it was like I don't give a fuck about the hype. I just fuck yeah. with the clothes. Bro, I wanted like, the, I wanted the free clothes because I was spending money using yeah. John's code. <laughs> That's funny. And yeah. I was in college, I was like, bro, I don't I don't have this money. Because if if he really just wanted in for the money he probably would have like spam tagged like Gymshark or something, yep. but he was like, "No, I fuck with this company." Yeah. I so, but like, now people have it's just turned into like, "Oh, this company's so hype!" Like, yeah. I'm gonna just spam tag him. It's yeah. funny because like I was like I was really hesitant to sign John when we first uh, like signed him because it was like so it was Giordani was like our first 2019 Giordani was our first big athlete right that we first big athlete at all like that we signed. Wait, so can we just talk a little bit about? Giordani getting signed and the process yeah, that went yeah, into yeah. that. Can you get into it? Yeah, of course. So, um, first of all, like I think I want to like tell people how where the name came from, right? Because a lot of people ask. Oh me yeah, that all yeah, the time. yeah. So, um, eBay days, we needed a username for for Young LA, um, and it was Robbie was listening to the radio, and it was like one oh one oh five point nine. It was a DJ called uh, Young California, and that's where young la came from because young california he was like yo this is a cool dj name and we needed a username for our ebay account and so it was like okay young california young la that's got a ring to it so we had young dash that's insane young dash la was our username for for a long time and we were just selling like the same thing tupac shirts or whatever right and then we eventually made an amazon account and then we saw a need for short shorts on like men's short shorts because nobody was had that at the time like there were some in australia back then and like people were wearing that here but no brand in in L- in like california in, uh, in the u.s made short shorts is that where the bodybuilding lift shorts came from yes the one so those have been around for a minute 101 those are the first yeah, oh shit oh shit oh one damn you have nothing under it's not like 98 like yeah. you don't have yeah. any that it starts at 100 yeah and yeah it, it, those are the one of the first like this probably like the the first product and it's still around there's a lot of other products were like that came after that are st- that are not around but those shorts still still sell like crazy still bro sell like crazy every time yeah. we restock them they sell out so yeah we so those were like robbie's like yo we got to make something of our own and i was like you sure like i don't know i don't know if it's a good idea because like you i don't know if people are going to want something that's not because we were just selling like branded stuff at that time we're like you know tupac but mm-hmm. young la wasn't a thing it was just a username mm. and so we made these shorts and they actually started selling on amazon like for back then like we're selling like 20 30 shorts a day sometimes and i was like holy shit like this is a lot of shorts yeah. like wait so wait, how 20 to 30 days kind of like kind of a shit yeah. done bro 20 wait, 30 so shorts a day yeah so it was like i was like that's holy crazy shit. Yeah, yeah like hundreds of dollars a day so how how did you go about finding a manufacturer back then so we actually uh talked to like we were, cause like Robbie knew a lot of people in downtown LA. So like, that's when we first started talking to manufacturers. And then the other thing that we did was go to, um, uh, trade shows in Vegas. There's a trade called show like magic. And there's like other ones that you go and like, you meet manufacturers and like, that's how, like they have like a sourcing section. So if you want to, you know, if you want to get, want to start your own brand, like instead of making stuff in the U S we were like, Hey, let's talk to these manufacturers who, you know, so at these trade shows, they'll have like a section for China. They'll have a short section for like Pakistan and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So, uh, we went there, talked to manufacturers. So building the manufacturers was like the biggest key mm-hmm. uh, of, you know, the I feel like that's the, that's the main thing that it, like, if you want to start a business, you got to yeah, find a good manufacturer. Exactly. And we went through so many of them, right? Like there's a lot of people that we worked with in the beginning that we don't work with any anymore. You know, there was like, you go through a lot of trash because yeah. like 
people are not organized or like they hype you up like yo we'll do this and promises that for you and shit. so false promises. so many false promises left and right yeah but you know we found some good people started making stuff with them and then you know that's what that's where the foundation of the manufacturers was started um but following along to that story so we were just an amazon brand for a long time so 2016 2017 amazon that's all we did that's when Young LA started, like the Young LA. So we had a side of Amazon that was just random products. And then after that, there was a side that we started building. Like there was a one-on-one shorts. We had these uh, like soccer pants. Those were the 202s or the 201s. Like there was different, different like jogger mm-hmm. shorts that we started making. The, the tight ones? The tight one with the, yeah, with the stripe on the four, side? Four stripes. Yeah, so yeah, those yeah, were yeah. like the yeah. 201 uh, soccer pants that we sold for a long time. But we would make these like big list- listings on Amazon and just like sell the same product. Like it wasn't like we were dropping new products all the time, but we would get one product, perfect it, have a listing on Amazon and just trying to get more reviews. I remember I used to like fake, like tell my friends to like buy stuff on Amazon and then like I would pay them for it and then they would leave a review. Mm-hmm. And that's what, how like we started building yeah. our Amazon listings. And it's funny because like some of my friends still like, like ask me about that and stuff. So like I was like, you know, like a lot of people like helped me get to uh, where like, you know, with the reviews and stuff, it was, it was huge. Yeah. I like that. I like that how on the, on the Young LA website now you can still leave a review and people leave yeah. photos and shit. And that's something that like you guys have always been, I remember like when I was shopping on the site, I would always go look and see how that shit would fit. Dude, the reviews are honestly like huge. Cause like a lot of people, a lot of these guys love leaving like photo reviews and you actually see like customer yeah. and like, you know, especially if you've been to the, if you come to the website and you've never been there before, or, like you don't even know what Young LA is, which is, you know, still a lot of people, like we get new customers all the time, but you see like there's actual people like loving the clothes and loving the brand. And like, they're like so excited to leave these reviews and there's actual photos. Cause like you can lie and write fake, like, you know, words, mm-hmm. but you can't lie with the photos. You know, if you got yeah. like hundreds of people, like some of our products have like six, 700 reviews under one product. Like what? Perfect tees. Perfect tee has like 700 reviews. Um, the one-on-one shorts has like insane amount of reviews. Yeah. So it's like, it's, it's still insane how well perfect tea there's, st- are they still your, like your number one item? Uh, Yes, like overall, because we always keep that in stock. Yeah. So like overall, number wise, like perfect. They're out of stock right now, bro. The straight bottoms. Oh shit! Because I like every time <laughs> oh, I post, every time I like I post them, people are like, "Yo, where's what's the shirt?" Yeah. And I'm like, "Straight bottom, perfect tee," but it's sold out. Talk to Sarkis, dude. He's our inventory guy. <laughs> Sarkis, get on it, bro. Sarkis got to get on it. But uh, we try to keep those things in stock all the time. But you know, because those are like your staple. Like mm-hmm. that's what you came up on, and they still fucking hit. Yeah. Like they eat. Exactly. So, like, we spend a lot of time on our products. So like you know like. They eat because, like, I try literally everything on, go through all that process. So, you know, like, they people love them because they actually are good products, you know. And, like, mm. we put a lot of time into each, everything, like, every little detail. And, you know, there'll be little fuck-ups. And, but we, we also try to perfect it. Like, if we do a restock, like, sometimes the fitting is different because we, you know, learn the people's feedback. Right. And, you know, if it's, like, too long or too short or, like, it's too tight, like, we'll, we'll fix that over time, too. So, we like every every reorder or every restock too. It's like you know, we try to perfect the product more and more, and I think that's where a lot of my time goes into and Robbie's and you know, but that's what makes the brand what it is today. So yeah, yeah. you were you were telling me that you would have like these bulk shipments and then they would be fucked, so you just wouldn't sell them. Dude, I've had Damn. that so, so many what, what, times. What, like, what would you do with the clothes? Just don't like eat recycle them. them? Damn, don't eat bro. them. Like I, I, there was a whole container of these sweaters that we made uh, last year. It was a whole container. Uh, like like 400 boxes of these like zip up sweaters we made and Fuck. they were too tight and I was like I don't want to sell this like I was so upset because like manufacturers will fuck up left and right like they'll tell you they're gonna send you this and it'll be all perfect and stuff like that but when they when you actually get the bulk shipment it's a whole different product you know that happens mm. all the time it happens even today and yeah it was just all fucked I was like so yeah. did you end up like disposing of that manufacturer or did you just ream them out and make sure it wouldn't happen again um if it's happened more than once. Then we were like, all right, we start putting our business somewhere else. Uh, yeah. It just depends. Like, you know, if it's like the percentage, if it's happening often, then, you know, you're out. But yeah. if it's like, you know, once in a while, like it happens. Like, but it also like depends on like how bad the mistake is, right? If it's like a little bit, like a, a centimeter here and there, like it's understandable. You know, things change. Like when you, because like a lot of the samples are made in a sample room, but when they do bulk production, it's made on these like big lines and, you know, production lines. So like things do change a little bit. But if it's like, bro, like how did you not catch like, this sweater being two inches tight like mm-hmm. you know that's like a whole size difference like and i'm not gonna sell some like tell people to buy large when they're supposed to be buying small like you know like so yeah in that case it's like all right bro you're out and like we we've had to like lose like 40 50k of like it cost on products and even like 70k at a time like 
just because I didn't want to sell something that people weren't going to be happy with, you know, yeah. so that's like very important for us. Wait, so, so back to the Giordani story. Yes. Cause he was back in like 2018. Yeah. He's like, Mr. IFBB Pro doing all these like magazine shoots like he was so people cringe, see bro. him nowadays. Yeah, he used to do like the naked shoots. Yeah, because yeah, he does like he's all about like you know positive vibes and energy nowadays. But I don't think people realize like he was fitness dude. Yeah, like, dude, straight he, up fitness dude back in the day, dude. At one point, his physique was absolutely nah, bro. Was fucking, bro, he looks insane. fucking crazy. He looks like he insane, to, yeah. and he still looks really good now. Like he bro. looks. He's, yeah, and he's and got and the biggest chest like of joke anyone about it. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't even train oh, chest. Yeah. I'm small now. I'm like, dude, you're, yeah. No, you're yeah. he looks fucking great. He's, dude, he doesn't look <laughs> like an XL, but like XL stuff just looks perfect on him. And yeah. he's just like so broad and big. And like, he just like genetics, but also just like, like, I mean, he worked hard for his physique back in the day. And he was all about like, I need to be IFPB pro. Like, so that's when, so 2018 is when we started like, so, you know, 2017, we're like, all right, we have the Amazon stuff going. And then we finally made youngla.com because- in order to get verified on Amazon, you had to have your own website. And that was the only reason why YoungLA.com was ever made in initially. Oh, really? Yeah, it wasn't like actually planned to sell on YoungLA.com. But it was like, if you have a website, you can get like a verified badge on the Amazon. badge, yeah. So we did that. Um, and then I was like, we started getting like a couple orders on the website, like here and there. And I was like, holy shit. Like every time it was funny, like we were getting like seven, 800 orders on Amazon every day. There was a time and then. We would get one order on the website and like literally everybody in the office would just start clapping. Bro. <laughs> like we're like, we got an order today. Yeah. And so that we did that for like 2017 for a while. 2018, we started getting like four or five orders every day. And I remember I used to like we I would like talk to different marketing companies and stuff like that. And um, I was like, my goal is just to get 100 orders on our website no, every I day. I could hear it in the, in the, in the yeah, mic. Yeah. Really? Yeah, keep it good. down. Keep it down. Yeah, it's OK. OK. okay. But yeah, um, so every day my, my goal, like I would talk to these companies like, hey, I want to like increase our website. Like, what can we do? And like, you know, different marketing tactics and stuff like that. But I would always tell them, I just want to get 100 orders every day on our website. If we can do that, like, I'll be happy. That's all I want. And so we were getting like 10 orders at a while. So like 2018 was kind of like that very few, like the revenue was pretty low. And then 2009, end of 2018 is I started talking to Giordani because he would model clothes for father and sons. And he was so good at the modeling, the, the mm -hmm. shit that he still does, yeah. right? And I was like, bro, like, I, if somebody, because I knew our products were there and, like, we had the perfect products. But I was like, if I can get somebody like him to sell our products, like, I think we can kill it. And, but he didn't want to sign with us because nobody, like, we had 10K followers. Like, he was still, like, at, like, 500K. Like, he was like, why would I be with a brand like this? He was a brand called Spear that, um, like, it was like, they were literally a dead brand, but they were paying him because they were, like, backed up by, like, some government shit. But they were paying him like 2K a month or something. And he was like, bro, I don't literally have to do no work for this brand. So why would I sign up, sign with you? I literally kept bugging him for six months. <laughs> DM him, try to do on calls. And then finally, end of 2018, he was like, all right, fine. Like, let's do this. And then we negotiated a deal and stuff. And at that time, I was like, bro, this is so much money. And doing a full year contract, I was like so stressed out. Um, and it was like a very small contract compared to what things are today. And mm -hmm. But he finally agreed 2019 he finally like, oh, I'm with Young LA. That's what we kind of like, we were put on the map. And that's when we started like, you know, he started doing his try on hauls like in March and stuff like that. And that that's was in when March, 2019, March, 2019. And that's so, when we started like, you know, building that base for the followers. And, and then the, the IG started moving and we started getting more and more followers mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Cause he said that like you guys would send him packages and stuff and he'd open them and be like, I don't like this. I don't like yeah. this. I don't like this. This one's okay. So why, because I've never really gotten like a straight answer from him. Why didn't he just like block you guys and be like, I'm done, like wasting my time on you guys. Like he, it's like he still had hope. Yeah. But he just didn't give you the time of day. But low key, he was like waiting. Yeah. You know? It's also just keeping that door open. You don't want to just block him. And because he like, Gurma hit him with like a fucking 20K salary. True, you know? true, true. Like, exactly. So I think he, he, he also like liked the clothes enough to not close the door. Mm -hmm. But then there was a lot of pieces he didn't like. But then he was like, yo, this is actually this one of the items was actually pretty sick. I remember we had these like thermal shirts and he was like, yo, actually, these are pretty sick. And that's when it kind of like I saw his like mind like kind of changing. And I was like, all right, mm. then we can, you know, and then finally, even like the first few months, like there was a lot of products that he didn't fuck with. But then eventually we were like, all right, like, you know, we started like involving him on some things, too. And then, you know, it started growing. Like you started like catering to what he wanted to wear because I think it would be easier for him to sell. Right. You know, not just like like he was involved in like the design not literally in the design process, like, all right, what can we make that you will like to make, you know, you would like to wear on a daily basis? Cause 
I like even our first few months, like he would be wearing other brands. I was like, I don't want that. Like I want him to only wear Young LA. And then I was like, okay, what do you want? And he wanted like you know, that's when like the perfect tea idea came around. Like yeah. So what so was that? And like was that like early twenty nineteen? When when did the perfect tea? Because because people yeah. don't realize this is like this is like a fucking legendary item. Yeah. So so, so also, this is only three years ago. Like let's just put that in perspective. This yeah, is only yeah, three yeah. years ago. But exactly. and what's even crazier is like the real growth has been in like the past one year. So it was like it's like that exponential curve where like it started to pick up and then just like boom, everyone got signed and yeah. it just like went to the moon. So I actually did. Uh, so we in Ju- in August of which was last month, right? Yeah, August of uh, this year, we did more sales than 2019 and 2020 put together. In one month. In August? In August of last, last month. Wait, so the to- month. so two years, you did more sales in one month in 2022 than you did in two years combined? Yeah, and that also being not like months long time ago, like 2019 and 2020. Wait, like even Black Friday and shit last year? Not last or year. Or 2020. 2020. 2020. 2020. 2020 Black Friday was pretty big, dude. You were, yeah, you I was there. Yeah, I was there. So 2019 That's plus 2020. Wild, bro. All together, we did more sales last month, which is fucking insane. Like the growth has just been, like the support, like thank you to everybody. Like it's just been crazy and like you know i'm so grateful and blessed to to be here but yeah, yeah that's so, wait so 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 perfect tea what this was jordani's idea entirely or what no it was more uh it was like robbie's idea like yo like why is he wearing sh- like these other shirts that like you know we don't like why don't we have shirts like that because he would wear them just like plain black shirts and stuff like it was like okay like let's make something that caters yeah, he'll to wear and, and, perfect then, and then tea, yeah. we made it and then we would send it to him and then we had some feedback like make, let's make this shorter let's make this tighter and then we like all right, what color should we make? So that was like the legendary perfect tea was dropped. We actually did the LA Fit Expo in 2019. And that's when the first time we sold the perfect tea and it was actually sold at the expo first. And then we launched it on our website because like the stock was there. It was like, yo, we can sell this. And it was like popping off at the expo. It was just a basic yeah, blank yeah, shirt. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. All it has is the hem tag on the bottom. Right. Nothing on the back. It was just a plain tee, but it just fits so well. Um, so, so we just had Girani up there, mannequin, like just standing <laughs> yeah. like this with I his arms to his side. You know how yep. he does it? Yeah, like, with the with the tricep lock. <laughs> yep. yeah. Wait, so um, how many samples would you say you sent to him before he was like, yeah, this is perfect. Like you should produce this in bulk. So I think I personally went through like seven, eight different prototypes mm. of the perfect tea. And then finally, when it was perfected by my approval, then I sent it to him, and then I think there was oh, like a couple shit. back and forth because I was like, so a total of like ten, 10 maybe. Yeah, so I was Damn, like, bro. the shoulder, the shoulder was like a big thing because like we didn't want it to like pull up, but it had to be perfect. That that, that, just, that like scrunch that a yeah, lot of yeah, a lot dude, of a lot of t-shirts get, get, get yeah. that scrunch up so at the shoulders because like, if you had the arms tight, the arms pull up, right? Mm-hmm. But then it makes that scrunch. But I was like, it had to be perfect, and then the length was a big one because Jordan liked everything so long mm-hmm. back because he has a big ass chest, and it makes like. It makes things shorter. For, it makes it, it pulls it, has to it go out. All the air, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, like the length was a big thing, and like that was like the reason why a lot of our stuff was like really long in the yeah, beginning. And scallop too. Yeah, yeah. So. And I told you, I was like, bro, you gotta like scallop. Yeah. No more scallop. No more scallop. Dog. Like yeah. Yeah. straight bottom. Yeah, I've I've told you the same thing about straight the uh, the the uh, cutoff tees. Some of the cutoff tees would be like super down low, and you were like, I agree with you, but the customers want like longer yeah. shit. So Fuck, it was bro. a lot of it was like size down everything. Jordani Jordani would make them look good. Like even if it was like really long, he would make them look good on his videos and stuff. And I was mm-hmm. like, at a time like because he was like he was young LA. You know, it was like he was the only athlete at that time. He was bringing in like it was him and the next athlete down was like you know one tenth huge difference. Yeah. And so I was like really catering to like what would look good on him and like it was working at that time. I was like, all right, we're se- we're seeing good feedback. But now we're like, okay, like we're catering to so many people and like, you know, the lens are definitely a way better and we're not making stuff too long and stuff. He's like, like that. the least realistic model ever. Dude, he looks better than 99.9%. I, I was people. so confused because he's not super tall. Like Sush is like what? Yeah, like, I'm 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, yeah. And like, but stuff's like, even like, the, like if we fuck up on a project and it's super long, I'll send it to him. He's like, this is the best shit you ever made. Because his chest has so much like yeah. square yeah. feet, like it just goes over it, yeah. and it would look perfect. He was like, sometimes like people would be like, "Oh, this is the perfect length," or "This is like a little long," and he'll be like, "Oh, this is too short." Like yeah. I'm like, "Bro, like, it's your yeah, chest." And now he's, he's got finally that rib cage, bro. Reali- he's finally realizing, like, okay, like yeah, we got to cater. Like if it's short on me, it's it's perfect on other mm-hmm. people. So yeah, mm-hmm. we're finally getting that. That's <laughs> super interesting. Yeah. And then he he did the uh, he helped out with like the wide neck thing. 
He was the wide yeah. neck, and it's, that was it even yeah, 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 and that even said, probably yeah. a year ago. Yeah, that was like a year ago. So like, and it that says was, the yeah. Jordani on the side. Yeah, he would he would send because he he would make like wide neck his shirts. And he was like, bro, I'm getting cut a, him. a thousand DMs. Like he always talks. Yeah, no, like, that's what he fucking does, right? yeah. bro. I swear, yeah. like a million people have been DMing about these yeah. glasses. Like, let and me know. And then he'll send you all the screenshots, and I was like, <laughs> yeah. bro, like I get it, I get yeah, it. And I believe me. you, bro. You don't have to send the screenshots, dog. <laughs> but that's what Jordani is. He's yeah. just so passionate about it. Yeah, you know? so that's, that's what it's we love good though. That's like a good person to have on your team if you're like building a, a brand like that. Yeah, because like, dude, he's gonna say no until he's really fucking serious yeah. about saying yes and then once he says yes he's like super he's fucking it, passionate yeah. about it dude he is the reason why fitness influencers do try on hauls like oh yeah like yeah facts like that's yeah. like, i you, never he changed that trend like you guys do it now but mm -hmm. he made that the standard for a young la athlete like you have to do a try on because before that people for other brands they'll just take a selfie right and nobody would actually just like explain what the, the nobody would explain the product and then he started like you know he put his phone down Talk about this, this, and go so deep into it where his stories were just dots. Oh, but yeah. then he nobody, still does that. <laughs> nobody was able to copy that, but they were like, okay, I need to do that if I need to be part of Young LA because if this guy's doing it and he's killing people, are like seeing, like, oh shit, he like, this guy's making money. Yeah. And then people were like, oh, if I do the same thing, and then people were trying to copy. It was so funny. Like, he would always send me, like, oh, look at this guy. He's trying to, like, do Bro, the did same he ever thing. send me? Did he ever send me? Cause you no, told cause me, you told me you were like, yeah, he you did, were like, he did. You were like, watch, know, you were like, watch this guy's story. Yeah. And then, and then you were like, watch him and then like kind of do what he does. And I was like, okay, like, fuck it. You actually had your own twist to it. There was a lot of people who were just trying to like model the same way, like walk the same way, but they were like, they were not natural in front of the, like mm. in front of their stories. But like you had your own, like you would do your little dances when mm. you first signed. And it was mm. like, it was actually funny and good to watch. And you obviously didn't go so deep into it, which was, which worked yeah, for I you. I try to keep them short. You, which worked for you and for your audience. But a lot of people like, yeah, you, you weren't a problem because you had your own like twist to it but you probably wouldn't have done try on hauls if it wasn't for Drew. oh no because you, know? you told me you were like yeah. watch his shit and yeah. like pretty much do what he does and i'm like okay yeah. and that's, that's mm. what i did so i think the so through giordani because like him and john were really good friends right so mm. that's where john john came. used to do them john used to do them too uh but that's where john came from and we were you know he became part of the the team and i, I was very hesitant because john had like you know interesting history before then i was yeah. like because he had he worked with a brand that he like, I think there was an issue, and then, like, Jed there North. was Jed North, and it was some... Like, fuck Jed North, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us backwards. Dude, there was there was a point where they were our biggest competitor, yeah. and I was like, oh, I want to be like Jed North, like, you know, yeah. like, uh, but, they, yeah, like, he was with that brand, and they had, like, a fallout, and, like, it was bad, and I think it hurt, it hurt Jed North, and I was like, dude, what if something, like, happens to Young LA? Like, we were so young, and, like, we couldn't afford anything like that, but I was like, fuck it, like, you know, I'm going to sign john and like take that risk but it was like me and robbie talked about it back and forth for a long time like should we go this route and like get john but i'm so glad we did because you know he helped that brand grow and then through john came sush because mm -hmm. sush liked john and like he was like so john was your idol like yeah bro because he was like he was tall as fuck asian and i was like bro like i want to look like this dude exactly <laughs> so john was the guy and yeah. like he was like edgy and like you know he, yeah. he like I, I love i love john like still like one of the nicest dudes I've met. Like, you know, he's, he's yeah, very he different, is. but he's very nice. He's genuine. He's like, you know, he has a really good heart. So shout out John. But, and yeah, so he, uh, he like, I'm so glad we signed John because it kind of opened the doors to Sush, which was like a big turning point for the brand because of, you know, how that, much it that, grew, that but, but, but how that much it, exactly like, it opened the doors to all the TikTok kids, mm -hmm. and, you know, and like, and that's just like that, 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 like, that like 16 to like 19 year old demographic yep. of kids who want like they lift but they want to have style too yeah and then sushi is like here i am <laughs> yeah. bro because i feel like when i was in high school like i would try to like dress up and like or not dress up but like try to get fits together but like no no one could really like look good in high school i feel like only like a couple of kids were, were dripped out like wearing dope shit yeah mm. so i was like high school fashion is also so weird yeah. though like you know, it's just like either really baggy or really tight stuff. Yeah, like, it exactly. Was like, it was all over the place. Because like people were in like Nike highlighter shirt and shorts. Like that's <laughs> what. Like bro, my mom would like she would be like, okay, here's your fit. Like middle school probably. She yeah. would like make my clothes. Maybe not middle school. I don't know. Yeah. But <laughs> she used to make me fit. Senior year. Yeah, and then she would make me fit, and I'd be like, okay, so this is how I'm supposed to dress. So like middle school, I was wearing like blue shirt, blue shorts, because I was like, it's matching. But now, <laughs> but now, like, yeah. Well, fucking Joe, Joe matches and shit, but but Joe pulls it off and shit. But yeah. um, I just think it's funny because now like. A lot. It's it's almost just like a, a butterfly effect of how much people are dressing now, just in like high school, and middle school, and like a lot of these younger guys. Definitely. 
I mean, I think it's because Instagram, right? Like people see all yeah. these people dressing up and they're like getting fit ideas and like, you know, people want to spend money, like especially like guys didn't really care how they looked back in the day. But now they're really like, yo, I want to look good. You know, like I want to, you know, like they yeah, focus on getting shit. Yeah. Like, then. It's like I got to look good, you know, make wear good clothes. And a lot of that is just like looking at all these influencers are like, oh, what are they wearing? And that's why. And it's funny when Giordani was like our main person, we were like Excel size would sell so much because he was excel and he would like you know a lot of his audience were like these big dudes or older guys and then when sush came on board we started selling smalls and mediums <laughs> like crazy because there's all these younger kids that's funny and we had to like completely shift because like we were you know we order our orders are placed like seven eight months in advance right so like if a product that's launching today it's it was you know the order or like it was completed the order was placed seven eight months ago so like it was based on the numbers back then. So mm. when Sush came aboard, like we were selling out of smalls and mediums because the orders were older orders and we weren't ready for the ratio of right. the sizes to change. So you had a bunch of large XL in size exactly. but you didn't, in, yeah. in stock, but you didn't have smalls and mediums. Because they would just sell out so right. fast because he was selling. So like that took a while to fix. And then, you know, and it still changes all the time. Like yeah. we'll get. I even now people are like, bro, why is shit like, dude, some guy was so mad. Like he was DMing me. He was like, he was like, like, I could just hear, like, I couldn't hear it because it was a text, but I could just see the emotion. He was like, what the <laughs> fuck are you guys doing? Like, you guys don't make enough clothes. Like, what the, like, yeah. you could make so much money. What the fuck? I'm, yeah. I told him, I'm, bro, these are, these orders are placed like eight to a year, yeah. like earlier. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, we have no idea. Like, yeah. cause we uh, obviously pr forecast for the growth. Yeah. And like, I feel know, like now you guys have a better like yeah, grasp on it. But exactly. Like, three Breath months ago. And like selling out is cool too. You know, I, I, I love what yeah, true. Out. Especially it, like hype items, like dope yeah. items, like. Like an everyday tea is like not going to sell out, but like your exclusive items, it's dope yeah. when it sells out because then it keeps it like exclusive. But like mm -hmm. even like the immortal joggers or like the block party shorts, like it wasn't like we made like 2000 pieces like the immortal. The first time the restock, the, the first like launch Stock. was uh, yeah. like 15,000 units, you know, and it sold out like yeah, this no, it and it wasn't it sold out in like five minutes now. Yeah. Like both the block party and immortals were just insane. And, and like every restock for immortals is they're huge restocks. It's not like we're making like a few units. Like, why would I want to do that? You know, I want to keep it in stock. Right. I do want to sell out, but I don't want to sell out in five minutes. I think that hurts the brand. Like I want more, enough people to get it, but sometimes like you don't really, the hype is there insane for some products. And like, sometimes I'll think a product's going to go off and we'll order a lot and it doesn't go off, you yeah. know? So you have to keep it balanced. Cause like, you know, business decisions, like you don't want to <coughs> screw up on that. So I think that's very important. I so think, what uh, I was just gonna say, I think uh, a good example is like the, the birds and the hummingbirds. Cause at first when y'all dropped the, like the, I don't know what piece it was, maybe like crazy, bro. the shirt with like yeah, the bird and, the like, and like everyone was like, bro, this is fucking crazy. Yeah. Then y'all started spamming them because when you guys made the orders, they were so long ago. So you were in this, you were in your like bird stage. You're, you <laughs> were about the bird? Yeah. You were bird in your stage, you were in your bird and flower art. Yeah. And so you're like, all right, let's fucking let's spam these. Cause these are lit. And then, you know, time goes on and people are like, whoa, like too much. Yeah. And so that's why I got Just some backlash. The bird stuff. But like, it still goes off, it though. It still goes off. And, like, numbers-wise, like, it yes. always, it's always sold, sold yes. out. Like, the flowers. Because, like, to me, like, like all these other brands do, like, really hard, like, you know, stuff like like wolves or, like, gorillas yeah. and stuff like that. And, like, I didn't want to just be another fitness brand that was just doing aggressive, like, animals and stuff. And I was like, you know, it'd be kind of cool to, like, do a completely different take on that and, like, do, like, flowers and, like, mm -hmm. you know. And it was, like, the, our peaceful summer. Peaceful shit. Peaceful shit. Like, summer, like, lines were, like, flowers and birds. And, like, to me, that was, like, dude, this looks dope. Plus, it's not your typical, like, you know, it's like, it's like, it's hard, but it's not hard. You know, it's like the opposite. And I was mm -hmm. like, uh, and I, and like initially, like people were like on it. And then we started getting some like negative feedback on that. And we obviously change based on that. But um, yeah, shout out the bird hat. Hey, look, we got Zen, we got Zen hats. Yep. Coming soon. When is it? 13th? Next drop. Yeah, 13th. 13th. Nah, those are hard. <laughs> Zen hat. The first time we posted those, like people yes. went crazy. Bro, I posted it like four months ago when I had the first yeah. the first sample, and then people were like, "Bro, when's the I had like a hundred shares." I like, still think that that hat's gonna completely go. Oh no, yeah, this like, this yeah. like this is dope. Like, yeah. yeah, it like it has it has good good review. But then the people who are like anal about birds and shit, they're like, "Fuck that." Yeah, you know. But I I still think like not everything is for everybody, and that's it's okay, you know. Like, yes. Like. They, like, we, bro, if you don't like it, don't buy it. Don't, exactly. And, like, you know, I, I we take people's feedback. Like, I, I read every freaking comment. Like, I take people's feedback in a positive way. I never, like, I'm never going to be like, yo, why don't, like, screw your opinion. Like, I'm not like that. But at the same time, like, not everything is for everyone. Like, you know, some people love the bird shit. Some people don't. And it's, like, it's totally fine. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, certain fits. Or, like, people are like, oh, this is too tight. Or they're like, who cares for oversized stuff? Like, but, you know, the 
I don't want to just cater young LA to a few type of people. Like, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, it's the brand for the people. Like there's, you know, there's so many different people, types of people out there, different people like different things. And like, if you don't like it, it's totally fine, you know, but I'm sure you'll, there's a ton of stuff in young LA that you will like. And that's yeah. why mm-hmm. that's the brand I want to be. I don't want to be just for one certain niche. Like I want to be a brand for everybody. And that's the goal we want to like, it's not, it shouldn't just be only a brand for the fitness people too. I remember we posted this, uh, video with the swimming swim shorts with it was a couple yeah and to me that was like one of the best yeah. like reels we made good. and everybody was just shitting on the guy because he wasn't a fitness model he was just like this tall dude like he was fit but he wasn't jacked and people were like yo like anybody could be a young la model these days or this and that and i was like bro like it's okay to have different people on our page right we don't yeah. it, it doesn't have to be only people that look like james like you know yeah i like, think oh well, i think it's a lot of people that are like you know, fans of me or Sush or like other people that lift a lot. So then they get attracted to young LA Mm -hmm. and then they see someone like that and they don't realize that like this brand is way bigger than just us or like other big, like physically large athletes. Yeah. So they're like, Oh, I thought this was a fitness brand. It's like, why'd you think that just because we happen to model for it? Like there's plenty of other people that model for it too, you know? And like something I saw actually in my own warehouse, uh, like all our young, all our employees like love wearing young LA, bro. Every Thursday we sell to employees and they get a fat discount. And Bro, every Thursday, like, there's a, like, a long list of people. Like, they, they text it to, like, a group of, like, what they want. Bro, it's insane. We'll sell, like, $10,000 worth of shit, like, almost, like, every every Thursday. Like, it's insane. <laughs> like, people just buy so much stuff. And, like, dude, 99% of these people don't work out on a normal basis. Like, some of them are big. Some of them are small. Like, you know, like, different body types. But they love the clothes and they love wearing it. So, I was, like, we shouldn't have to be a brand only for people you know like yeah. or like like good body types obviously is important and stuff like that but it doesn't have to cater to only fitness fitness dude exactly. or, like, or like bodybuilders you know it should be just as long fit- as you don't yeah. go the gym shark route that's all you know no, we won't <laughs> but we but actually like even- did take uh fitness <laughs> out of our bio yeah we were drunk as fuck on the boat and yeah. i was like bro it's time to take that shit out yeah because like i don't want to just be <laughs> a certain niche like we're, we're like a lifestyle brand and like you know i want to be one day be a brand that everyone knows um you know like like Kit, like, like, like that's like that's somewhere like I want to be one day, and like I think that's a brand that I want to like get to one day because it's not you know anybody can wear it and still look cool and like you know they they do all these dope they dope and then there's collabs. also stuff for fit people exactly like and even my dad is seventy four and he does mainly like cardio just to stay healthy and he's like hey do you think I could get some of the you know what what was it called like the fitness shirts the one that I'm wearing just like the performance, performance line yeah, yeah. do you think I could get some of the performance stuff from Young LA I'm like, yeah, bro, I got you. Yeah. And they sent him this huge fucking package. Yeah, He's like, I didn't want all this. Like, yeah. thank you. That's one thing that I will say. Well, I've never worked with another company, so I don't know. But, um, like, you guys treat the athletes and, like, even family. Like, I'll hit you guys up almost every other day for a gift card. Like, a $100, $200 gift card just for, like, somebody that mm-hmm. asked me. He was like, yo, like, can I get a gift card? And I'm like, yeah, bro, I got you. So, I will say that you guys have always been very, like. um, Every other day? Yeah, like well, on, very on, bro. like he's in the group yeah. chat, so like yeah. he sees it. Like it's it's pretty often, bro. Yeah, I be but getting that shit I feel out. Like <laughs> I feel like that goes such a long way. Like being stingy on those like things is not gonna make the brand grow, yeah. right? But yeah. like, cr- like we really focus on taking care of our people. Like not just athletes, but like employees or like manufacturers. Like if you take care of people, like that goes such a long way. Like people genuinely will like the brand, and you know. You will see it. If you're promoting a brand that you don't really fuck with, like people can tell, you know, like even if you're like really good at selling, but you don't really, even if you love the product, but you don't really love the people behind the brand, Mm -hmm. you'll see that, you know? And like Sush obviously has like, we have such a great relationship. We have such a great relationship. Like all my main guys have such a good relationship with like, we're more than just, you know, you know, business people. Like we're, we're homies, you know? And like, I think that goes such a, such a long way. Like, cause the, the audience will see that and like, you know, doing this pod together or like me coming to San Diego that one time. Mm-hmm. And like that, I think like that's what makes Young LA what it is, you know, and people see that it's a gen like the family behind it and the genuineness behind it is very, very important. Yeah, because once you become like super corporate where the head yeah. honcho is disconnected mm-hmm. between like five layers of executives between the actual athletes, yeah. it becomes much easier for the athletes to start hating on the brand exactly. because they're like, I don't even know who fucking runs this shit. Why should I even like it? Yeah. But it's like when you actually put in the effort to make good connections with each one of your top athletes and you actually like show them love, it's like 
how are you going to hate on the brand if like the mm-hmm. actual fucking owner mm-hmm. is like showing you love, you know? Exactly. And it's, but it's much different because a lot of these brands will be like, well, I'm, I'm too big now. I've got to like hire out all these people, these like CFOs and CMOs and CPOs or whatever the fuck that like they deal, they hire more people who deal with all like mm-hmm. athletes and stuff. So you be, it becomes like very, you as an athlete become very disconnected from the brand itself because you feel like you're just a pawn, mm-hmm. you know, but with young Is that how you felt with Gymshark? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I like it's a little different with Gymshark, but I have to give credit to Dave because I think Dave is the only reason that it was different for me because I was only close to Ben, the owner, because I was friends with Dave. Mm. So I would, I was his plus one for like a lot of trips yeah. before I ever got signed. So it was like a little different because I actually had long conversations with Ben and he was a really nice guy. But then like once I wasn't really hanging out with Dave as much, then it's just like I'm answering to some guy who's answering to some guy who's answering to some guy who's answering to Ben. So then mm-hmm. it's like, I don't really talk to Ben anymore. And I, you know, I become more just like controlled. So then I was like, It, Fuck it is possible to be that big corporation, but keep that family like mentality. I think like, you know. I mean, it's you, a lot of work. It's, a, it's really it's, hard. It's hard, yeah. but yeah. you can keep it there. But like, you know, you still have to be connected with your athletes. I think that's very important. Like I, I have like, as we've grown, like. So pretty much everything in Young LA that p- different people do, like I was doing that at one point, right? Like I was the one printing labels at one point. I was the one making the listings. But we have different people doing all these different things now because like I'm kind of just like overall just overseeing everything. Plus putting I'm out fires and stuff. Putting out fires and everything. And then just, and then I'm just, I'm still very involved on the product side and the athlete side. But even as we get bigger and bigger, like, yeah, I'm not talking to like every single athlete, but you know, but like my main guys, if I'm like disconnected with them, if I'm not getting their feedback, mm-hmm. I think that's where the brand's going to go to shit, you know? Cause it's like, yeah, like the clothes are important. Like if I like them, that's very important. Like to me, that's the start. But if you guys don't like the clothes or like, if I don't hear your feedback, then I think that's when you start becoming too corporate and you kind of start going to shit. Cause like, yeah, we can still be cool and still hit like Gymshark numbers. Right. And still be that level, but Hell still yeah. be, still be that like family oriented brand that, you right. know, and then it's still like edgy and cool and doing different things. And so I think that's, that balance has, that's what's really important. And that's been like my focus for like the last year. Like, yeah, we're like, we're huge now. Right. And, but I want to make sure we still stay to our, to our core values and stuff. So. Yeah. I think that's, what's different is uh, like with you guys is that it's run like a company that makes a million dollars a year, but it's actually a company that makes I won't say numbers if you don't yeah. want to get into it, but way fucking more yeah. than a million dollars a year. So it's like, it still feels like almost like a, a homegrown mm-hmm. business where it's like, you know, everyone and like, you know, there's a lot of people that are very high up in the company that I'm close with or that I at least know on some level. Mm-hmm. But with Gymshark, it's just like, there was just such this cloud of like, I don't know what the fuck is really like, who am I talking to here? Or I would like, kind of tentatively be like i don't know if i like this piece yeah. and they'd be like oh i'll talk to corporate about it yeah and like, no you won't like, but with whenever you, you I guys don't just, like think i can just i i've go i've gone straight to you about so many things where i'm yeah. like this is trash you know and i totally like i appreciate that feedback so so much and like you know we fix that every time you know if something is too long or like whatever i think going back to that staying true to our core values is very important and definitely like being an entrepreneur like the biggest things is like that plus like just taking care of your people, you know, I think that's what's going to go a long way and just being genuinely like helpful to people like your employees, your, your athletes, like being there for them. I think like, that's like the biggest entrepreneurship, like quality you need to have because mm-hmm. it's the hardest thing in a business is the people like, you know, everyone says yeah. that, right? Like, so my dad said he hit a restaurant and that's, that's everything. Finding people. Exactly. Like finding people that are passionate, uh, like that you, cause it's hard to find exactly. somebody as passionate Cause you never will. Exactly. You never will. Yeah. But like find somebody who it like almost or, or like is trying to be. Yeah. Like, There's like people in the company that like, bro, I'd die for those people, you know, mm-hmm. like not even, I'm not even talking about athletes, like people behind the scenes. And, you know, I always wanted to be the guy behind the scenes too. And it's like now like more people are getting to know me and stuff. And like, I'm finally doing this pod, like, but like being like the people behind the scenes, like there's a, there's so many, like, there's like a good, like 10, 15 people that are like, they're so important to everything we do. I, I see these people every day, but like, the love I have for a lot of these people is like, it's insane. Cause like, you know, I, we, we wouldn't be there without them and mm-hmm. you know, we take care of them. And so it's like, it's a two way street, you know, you, you go hard for them and they'll genuinely put in their best effort 
towards the brand. But if it's just like a nine to five, like if it's just a paycheck to them, then you'll actually see that in their performance. But if they're like, hey, I fuck with Gary, I fuck with Robbie, that will that's where they'll actually put their full effort and they'll treat it like it's their own company yeah. as well. You know, then that's when the stuff because I can only do so much. Right. Like I, I can't do like the Instagram posting or like <laughs> planning the photo shoots and the products right, right, and right. inventory. So it's like. That you find the right people and you stick with them and you you know you go to bat for those people they'll they'll love you and that's how the brand grows so yeah that's almost how, like how i feel because you like it, even though i'm not um like t- tied into you guys at all but like that's because you know i've been with two and a half years now so i feel like now i'm 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 like actually passionate yeah you know what i'm saying like i'm like exactly if, like it would it would suck if if something would have happened yeah and like I love that, like you know, like you guys treat like Young LA as your own, and that that it shows, you know, like when you're super passionate about it, or like, you know, like you, if somebody talks shit on Young LA, like you'd be like, yo, yeah, fuck, nah, like, yeah. like, nah, I'm yeah, not down yeah. with it. like uh, this is it, like you know, yeah. and like, and like at the end of the day, like there's so many brands out there. There might be a brand that'll offer you more money, but like you know, like that wouldn't ha- like you know, you would at least talk to me about it, you know, yeah. like in other cases, like yo, I'm out, like you know, if you don't really have that connection, but right. I think. That's that's very important. Yeah, I mean, and I, out there I gotta I gotta shout out the homie Sush because I've noticed like he always put in more effort than I think like every athlete besides maybe Giordani. Giordani was definitely yeah. number one. Um, but with it, it was like the past probably six months, yeah. it's just like you don't even ask him, and he'll go out to like Galveston, which is like an hour and a half away, and do a whole photo shoot and like reel and stuff without you asking him because he's personally invested in it now, you know? And he's like kind of come to this realization that like, this is my company in a way, not in the sense that he's like taking it from you, Mm -hmm. but like, this is my baby too. So like, I want it to fucking succeed. So I got to give a shout out to Sush yeah, because he, put it, he puts in a lot of fucking effort. What was the change? It. I guess I want to, I've never asked you. I don't know. I, it was just like, I started. I always, I always call it the Sush awakening. <laughs> yeah. It, was, it just, mushrooms yeah it was yeah mushrooms honestly like i did a little trip and then i was like bro i could be doing so much and then i was like i wanted to find what my actual like driving force was and it was just i don't know like i'm i'm very I remember you told me you're like dude i actually have a great time like doing these reels yeah and, like, like it's just it's just i enjoy doing them yeah. like they're just fun like yeah. putting my brain together with joe and like we're arguing and shit like <laughs> we're like no this is the shot and he's like and he's like no like trust me i got the vision i'm like bro just get this one shot just in case like yeah and so we're yeah. just arguing back and forth and it's just that's the stuff that i'm it's just fun like i love doing it dude every time i sit i like joe sends a reel like i'm like okay like i like yeah. stop doing everything yeah. and, like yeah, robbie come put through, your like, headphones like, in you know, and i'm shit, like, like we gotta watch this and like every time i'm just like blown away like with the quality and like the effort that you guys put in like and the best part for me is like i'm not asking you guys to do a lot of these things now and it's just like kind of getting done and i'm like it takes so much stress off me because like the content is obviously the biggest thing right and like i don't even care if like it's selling the product but like just having cool content on her page, like yeah. that's so important for me. You know, and like, the Instagram is where you're doing all the marketing too. Exactly. So it's like it's that's like where you want to put a the cool most reel that nobody even looks at the product, but like people are like, "Yo, this is sick!" Yeah. Like that to me is like, the I, whole, like I love that. It was know? the the two K reel, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The jerseys shirt, that was dope. Like the jerseys didn't even eat, yeah. but like the reel fucking ate because it was dope, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like the vision behind that reel was fucking amazing. Yeah, the <laughs> blog party restock reel. The block party restock, which was which that one was that like was the fun. first. That was, that the, was first the start of like, yo, we can do some serious like, shit. Cause that I think now it has almost seven hundred k or like six hundred k. Wait, was that was that? that was I was play. in that after party. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So no, I was no, in no, that. No, 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 no. You were in that one. Black block party restock. Oh, the that one was at the block party restock. Yeah, you were there. You were like, oh, that's right. That's you right. Were on prep, and though. I was in the after party. Yeah. Okay. 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 The, yeah. Yeah. I was on prep. So that that whole time period is foggy in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. The block I like, party restock. I didn't want to be there, but I was like, I'm going to fucking just do this. I'm going to make it happen. I was so... And you got a dope little reel out of it, too. Like, you did the little, oh, like, yeah, 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 like posing yeah, and yeah. shit. So. That, that one ended up hitting Explore, like, a month later. Yeah. Just, just because it's outside, hundreds of thousands bro. Of yeah. Yeah. But shit like that, it's... it's It has 700K, and obviously, no one... Like, people watching, they have no idea what Young LA yeah. is, but they're just watching because it's like, holy oh, shit, shit, this, this is, is sick. so sick. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, they're probably not even looking at the shorts. They're not even reading the caption. They're just watching and then scrolling by, which is... That's dope. It's exactly like like to me i also want to do different things that different brands are not doing and like bro nobody has a real real like that yeah. you know it's like it's just different it's like good content like i love that i do see like a uh, um the effect that it had that it has had had on uh, like mm-hmm. other companies and shit They're and like, i think Fuck, we gotta do yeah, something and like, i think it's dope like joe will send me videos and he's like bro look at this and i'm like <laughs> yeah like it's not like ours but it's close yeah. but it's yeah. 
<laughs> I think <laughs> not, it's dope. Not like ours, it's not like ours, but but it's close. And I, it, and I it's love cool. it's how cool. they're fun though too, and they're mm-hmm. not just like because like a lot of the brands like like the modern reels are like sick, but they're but these reels like have a storyline mm-hmm. and they're actually fun. Um, the last one for the Immortals that that one like it was like very serious, but like slow, but like it was dope. But like it gave me chills, and I, I was like. I called you after that shoot though, and I was like, "Bro, that fucking sucked." Yeah, like it was just so hot, and muggy, the bugs. Like I had it, and t- I was like, "Damn, we we did, we missed this one." Yeah, but, but I had when it. I saw that reel, I was like, "Yo, this is like I to- my I had, favorite." Yeah, because you were upset, and I was like, "Bro, no, like we got the reel, but like I just want to <laughs> let you know, it fucking sucked. Like yeah. it, it it was not fun." Yeah, and then yeah. with the block party restock. There was like it was like kind of serious, but then there was that clip of like me on Sushi's shoulders with the sign. Yeah, like we got dancing that. around. That, so it was. Like, was I almost and, died, bro. And like, bro, I swear to God, like all of these reels, and I'm I'm telling you guys this too. All of these reels, there's no like we joke around like, oh, we're having a meeting and stuff, but really we're just getting drunk and like fucking around. But <laughs> in, in like, all reality, there is no. They, we have a set, and then we have the clothes, we, and then we go there and we just see like, okay, what could, mm-hmm. what do we got? Like, yeah. what are we working with, it, bro? They look like there's a big production behind. Yeah, them. <laughs> like the two K one was literally we we're like, okay, let's go shoot like hoops over there, and then I was like, and then we were just like looking around, and and he didn't play two K, but I was like, bro, you ever played two K? And like, let's do like let's fly the drone, <laughs> like it's fucking two K, and like it was just random, like yeah, yeah, we had no idea that we were gonna do that, and that's probably one of my favorites too. Yeah, when you I feel like when your juices are flowing about these things, yeah, just, Adderall, you're, just, you're fucking going, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Like you got, you got like you opened up like so much, yeah. and then once you start, you can going, do it without stop. Adderall too, guys. No, you can yeah. do it without Adderall. <laughs> now nah, you can. It just aids me. But yeah. when you when you start get it, get into it, it's like holy shit. There's so like yeah. you just and you don't want to stop almost. And then half the time we're chasing daylight. Yeah, it's just like you're you're once you're like in it, you know, and you're like thinking about these ideas, or like you were showering, or like at night, like dude, some of the best ideas I've had for Young LA, like literally either like I'm half asleep and something comes to my mind or like mm. a lot of the ones in shower, I'm just like, dude, why don't we do this? Or like the shower thoughts, yeah, bro. shower thoughts are insane, there been, bro. I think I te- the keychain one that I texted you about, yeah. uh, cause I told him to do an air tag on keychain. I was in the shower and I literally, I didn't want to lose the idea. Cause sometimes I'll think of shit yeah. and I'm like, and I'll get out of the shower. I'm like, wait, what the fuck was I thinking about? Yeah. So I literally got out of the shower, bro, dried my hands and I texted you. <laughs> cause I was like, bro, keychain with the way air tag, That's like, okay. like shit like that. It yeah. happens to me all the time in the, in the shower. I remember our Black Friday la- this last year. We were we were getting kind of late on our orders. Not nothing like crazy, but because we had so many fucking orders, right? And it was like it was just going ham. Um, and shout out Mallow, she's right here. Uh, the boy, he. Oh yes, sorry. Boy, sorry. he doesn't have balls, sorry. but like he's a he, he's I'm just a so he used to she. Burpee, dude. I'm he's so a sorry. he slash she. But uh, I want, I want oh, Milo that camera alone, gonna fall. bro. Ooh. Like but, you were saying, I was saying I'm gonna miss Milo, and you were like, you should get a dog. I'm like, I don't want a dog if it's not Milo. I want that boy he's cloned, so, bro. He's so just... Milo's dog. Yeah. He is the perfect so dog. Chill, yeah. So chill. But what, wait, what were you saying? Black Friday last year, we were like kind of behind on our orders and just like it was... We were going crazy just trying to get these orders out. And like, I remember I thought about doing something in our warehouse just to like perfect the flow of how the orders were getting picked. And it was literally in the shower. And I went into work the next day. Or like that same day, and I was like, "We're gonna do this, this, this," and it like made so much things just flow better. And yeah. I was like, "I was like, damn, the I like shower ideas, just shower ideas." Like I've had so many of those. I'm like, these game changers, you know. So it's like those shower ideas take longer away. showers. <laughs> That's <laughs> weird though how it is. Also, when I'm high too, like when I smoke weed, I, I really like, I really just start over. I overthink, but then it also puts me into a creative. Yeah, state. it puts me in a creative yeah. state. I think it's because we're so. Like, especially you and me being, like, influencers, we're so kind of hooked on our phones. Mm -hmm. And then you're also running a company, so you're also hooked on your phone. So So you never really have time to just think. And I think it was Andrew Huberman. I don't know. uh, Derek's done some podcasts with him. But he says one of his – he's got, like, three requirements if you want to be, like, in a better mind state. And one of them is, like – within the first 10 minutes of waking up, you have to view sunlight okay. for at least like 10 minutes. So like go take a walk or something because it wakes you up, circadian mm-hmm. rhythm. But his second thing on the list was 30 minutes of non-sleep rest time. So he'll go and like off his phone, off everything, no distractions, not talking to anyone. He's just resting. Like have you ever gone into your bed and you can't really sleep, but you just need to like mm-hmm. chill for a second? He does that intentionally every day where for like 30 minutes he'll just go and kind of just rest and recuperate. And I think that's where like you don't realize how much you're on your phone until you do that for 30 minutes. You're like, holy shit, like I feel so peaceful now. And I think showering for a lot of people 
is the only time during yeah. the day where they what get the that. Fuck? Yeah. 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 So now they're I'm, like, yeah, now it makes sense. Yeah. So like you get that shower time where for 10, 15 minutes you yeah. have that, you You're can't have your phone in the shower yeah. cause you know, water. But if you intentionally do that, I think you'd get the same effect where if you just intentionally go in your bed and lay down, close your eyes and just don't sleep. Mm-hmm. Like think I think those same shower thoughts would come to you, you know, but I want to ask you a money question. Okay. What? Is and you don't have to answer this if you don't want to, but what would you say your average amount of pieces is for an average drop? Not a huge one, not a small one, just like an average looking drop. Maybe you drop five things. What what total amount of pieces combined? Unit wise, volume? yeah, unit wise. Um, uh, I would say around forty thousand pieces. Forty thousand, and you do two to three drops a month. Two to three drops a month, yeah. Mm. Plus restocks too. Yeah, restocks fucking. Bro, crazy. like out of any company that I've ever seen, y'all like y'all drop the most. Like I don't yeah. think even anybody's even close. Yeah, I I, I don't know. Yeah, because yeah. like, but when you think about like Nike, do they ever drop like, oh, like these shorts? I think they just always like rest like they, they just have they just shit. Have shit. Yeah. like and there's like always new stuff on their yeah. website. But I think the whole drop culture we've created is like it's insane. It's, like, it reminds me of Supreme. Yeah, but it's more often, I guess, right? Supreme is hot. Supreme, they had seasons, so it's every yeah. Thursday for like eight weeks or something. Mm. Oh, okay. And then they would like, that would be the spring-summer collection, and then right, there was right, a fall-winter right, right. collection. Okay. The so that, that, that would only be like 32 weeks out of the year, no? Because it's no, eight no, no. weeks I straight think for four seasons? Eight weeks straight. No, no. It's spring and summer is one. So it was either 12 or like eight weeks in a row. I don't know. You got to ask the hype beast, but <laughs> I'm not sure. I think it was eight or 12. So like, okay. let's just say 24. 24 drops a year. Yeah. Versus oh, okay, y'all are doing, gotcha. yeah, we're probably like I thirty six drops like, a year. Well, right? if you include the restocks, but no, like I think which I would include. The no, restocks. I would say thirty six like drops okay. a year, and then maybe like it's usually two drops a month at this point. Okay, sometimes so, okay. three, usually two drops a month. But then like November is usually that one big Black Friday drop. But Black Friday this year, we're dropping. 33 different styles. Ooh. Yeah, shit's going to go crazy. Yeah, because I remember it was, I think it was July like, or August. You guys did three drops and two restocks or something like that yeah. and like a sale. I don't know. It was like a bunch of shit in one month and my commission ate, bro. Yeah. Last <laughs> month was insane, too. Like, yeah. I think we had August. so much shit just happening. Like, we had the girls drop and then it yeah. was just August was. The sale. Or no, that was this month. This month, you guys did, like, the sale page. You, re- you Yeah, we just redid the sale page. And that wasn't, like, a sale, but it was just, like, I guess it kind of worked out. I mean, it is a sale, of- bro. Like, half that sh- it's, like, half off, more than half yeah, off. Yeah, it's, it's more just, like, clearing our warehouse. It's not, yeah. like, a sale on everything, which we only do that once a year, you know, on Black Friday. And, like, yeah, Black well, Friday We did it for 500K, year. too. Yep, that was 25. But, yeah, it's either... I kind of, like, we only do drops and never, like, I don't want to do a Labor Sale, Labor Day mm-hmm. Sale, or, like, a mm-hmm. July 4th Sale. I think that's kind of lame. But, like, we do have stuff on sale on our website all the time, and it's just, that's just, like, all right, we made too much or something, you know, trying to get rid of it. Or they're, or like, really old. Really old like, items. I'm done like, making this shit. Exactly. And we just yeah. want to, a lot of it's, like, warehouse space. Like, we want more warehouse space. Right. You know, especially if something is bulky and it's not moving, I'm like, yo, let's get the shit out that's, of here. That's a good like, problem to have. I'm yeah. running out of warehouse space. Dude. Wait, so, um, would you say that how many pieces would you say on average per restock? How many total units? Uh, restocks, it just depends. Sometimes these restocks are fat. Like, I think the restock, com- that was a couple of days ago. It was, that was a big one. That was a big one. It was, like, almost, like, 10 different styles. Um, that one's usually around, like, 50, 60,000 units. Mm. But those, usually, we try to keep those, you know, it's not like the first day they're out. They usually just sell throughout. And then, yeah, but the, the it wasn't, like, last year the units were, like, way lower. But now we're doing, like, around at least, like, eight to ten thousand per per style that we drop and then if it's like you know something that we really believe in then we'll do more or something we're not too sure of then we'll do a little less but so, around that so on a because i'm just so i'm just so curious bro because i I, yeah. i'm learning this shit too yeah, i haven't yeah. asked you about this before so on a non-drop day so let's say it's been like seven days since the last drop so all that stuff's basically sold out or yeah. lost hype and there's no sale and there's no restock. So a completely average young LA day, how many total units would you say you sell? Uh, so on our average young LA day, we're doing like 1,200 orders, twelve to 1,300 orders on our normal youngla.com day. Averaging like two items per order? Two to three is so like 2.5. So yeah. So like 30, 30K units a day on just a completely 20, average 20, day. 20? 20, 20? 25, yeah. <laughs> 20 to 25. Yeah, that's a lot of units. Like, like the sale, like uh, the units were just insane because. Do you ever just like look at? I'm sorry, but do you ever just like look at Shopify and just see like that's like, that's like an order every second, bro. Just like yeah, like 
I used to have it where it would like make a sound on my phone every time an order come in, but obviously I can't do <laughs> yeah, that. You turn like, that shit right off. It's it's on still, but it's on silent. Like, mm. the, but I still see, I I like. No, I don't know how you, bro. Just to interrupt you, I sometimes like you're showing me something on your phone, and then there's there's notifications all yeah. like not even Shopify, it's just Shopify, other shit. Shopify. I'm yeah. like, dude, how do you like operate? Because for me, like when I see a noti, I'm like automatically like, okay, like what is that? You need that but thirty dude, minutes yeah. non sleep guy, rest yeah. time, bro. Every time I text him, I get a reply instantly and it's yeah, insane and bro but so good at it because like if i'm on my phone and i see the noti like it it yeah. bugs me that like i have a notification like it's maybe ocd or some shit i have 1900 unopened text messages on my phone that's right crazy now. that's the that's only crazy. person i've seen with more than me bro yeah it's insane but a lot of those are just group texts that people are just talking yeah like, yeah i'm in them because i think it's like good that people think i'm in it but like i'm not reading through every single right, thing right, right? right like yeah i have them all like there's only a couple that i have like on silent but like for the most part like but i like to just just be involved in everything. Like, you know, like I'm in every single chat with all the athletes. Like I'm in, you know, like the official like WhatsApp chat. I'm in every single one of them. Um, manufacturers, I'm in every single chat, you know, or like a lot of the in notifications to just the Instagram. Like all those DMs, all those comments. The comments we turned off now recently, but the, the DMs is just like always new shit. But I also like sometimes like I don't want to miss something. So, you know, at least I see it. a lot of things I miss, which I'm pretty bad at texting back sometimes, but I, you know, I don't want to like somebody important like DMs us that we're trying to get. Like, I still want to be, get the notification, you know? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So last month you said, um, it was like your, it was better than 2020 and 2019 combined. Um, what was total sales? <laughs> Come on, bro. Just one month. Okay. Wait, wait, Total sales. If, if you don't want to say that, what was the total wait, 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 Maybe he doesn't want to say it. Maybe he doesn't want to say it. total sales last month. Total order or total, August. total unit sold. Total unit Robbie, sold. Does he get the, does he get the approval? No? Okay, kid, wait, does does he get approval for total units sold? Yeah. All right, total you units know sold. Uh, I think we got 108. I think it was around 250,000 units sold last month. So All right, so per day? $30, per, $30 per unit on average. You guys can do the math. Wait, what? What's that per day? Uh, there's like let's say yeah because we we did we yeah did, it's, okay, it's so almost like uh, 10,000 orders per day. Uh, 10, we did 10,000 uh, units per day, right? 108,000 orders last month. Okay, so it's about two point five units 5. on average per order. Yeah. So holy so shit. If it's, it's two hundred fifty thousand, it's about what eight thousand units a day, on average. That's right? insane. Yeah, it was a it was a crazy month. You know, this month I I hit a milestone in total sales for you guys. Shit, what was it? Five mil. That is fucking crazy, bro. Five million total sales with Young LA. Holy fuck. That is crazy. That's yeah. wild. It's fucking nuts. Yeah. It was it was literally just recently. You, why don't you tell me about that, bro? That's crazy. I don't know. I just, yeah. We well, actually I hit like a milestone last uh, uh, last month. We got our, our millionth order. Um, like, because, like, Shopify has, like, the number of, like, you know, as it, it starts at 1,000 and it keeps going up. And, like, my customer service team's like, yo, bro, like, this person got, like, the 100, like, the 1 millionth order. And I was like, holy shit. I think we posted about it, too. Wait, and I then, found a plot hole. What? So, last month, if you average 8,000 units a day, but you said, right? But... About that, because you did 250,000 units for the month. I don't really know the units, like, numbers off top of my... I, like, look at it more, like, in terms of, like, number of orders. But okay. Yeah. Uh, but we did... Yeah, 108. That was, that's the number I remember. Like, that, okay, that okay. number's there, legit. But um, then you said on a non-drop, like, a completely average day, you said... How many units you sell? 25,000? 2,500. Oh, 2,500. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. makes okay. sense. Makes sense. We do, like... On a normal day, we'll do, like, a little over 1,000 orders, and then, you know, times 2.5. So, like... 2,500 units. Right. I got you. Day, yeah. Did I say so? Thousand? So how many, just so far in 2022, what is the multiple in terms of the amount of sales you've made compared to 2021? So every year before 2022, we were like four, four to five X every year on our website, like mm -hmm. just growing. Uh, this year, I don't think we're going to be able to get to the four or five. Yeah, but I think it's we'll harder to be exponential exactly, at that point. Because yeah. last year was massive. Like, right. you know, last year we blew up like crazy and it was like crazy compared to the year before. But this year, I think we'll probably do like hopefully three X of last year. Um, still really wild. Right? That's yeah. still really good. But like years before that, we were hitting like five pretty much like regularly. Yeah, but it's, it's easier to go from like you know, a hundred thousand yeah, dollars, like a, a mill to a, a six year. Mil, like, exactly. Yeah. yeah. You can, you can easily five X a hundred thousand, yeah, exactly. but it's much easier to five X 10 million or something like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hundred mil, you know, just random numbers out there. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm very blessed to be where we are. And like 
every year like the, the growth has like beat my expectations like i knew we'd be you know like a top brand but at the end of the day like to be where we are like you know i'm very grateful and like the support like you know you guys just like the different connections we've built like there's been like big moments in young la where i'm like yo if that never happened like we would not be here you know like Jordani coming on board was like i spent so much time on it and what if i didn't you know like we probably mm -hmm. wouldn't be here or like getting john because like if we never got john maybe sush never came on board right right true so like different yeah. things like i always think about like you know like i owe so much to john just because like sush came through him you know mm -hmm. like so like those little things i'm like what if that never happened like where would we be you know so it's like you know like a lot of it's obviously like the hard work that me and robbie put in or like the right. employees but a lot of it's also luck you know like just you having your cards cards right like mm -hmm. i'd like you know a lot of that too god i guess you know and just like making sure you know he's taken care of and but but i think thing i always think is like good things happen to good people you know like you like karma i'm like big believer in that like you do good and good things will happen so and, and i think it just, that's very it just makes sense too yeah <coughs> like, like karma karma even from like like a logical perspective just makes sense because exactly. if you're just if if every person you come in contact with you give out like good energy mm -hmm. and they have something positive to say about you that's like a domino effect where then those people say something positive about you. And then those people say something positive about you versus if you're putting out like quote unquote negative energy, mm -hmm. it's like everyone's going to kind of yeah. have a problem with you. And then like, it's just not going to end up well for yeah. you because, because nobody's going to have like a good view of you in the end. Exactly. You know? I, I have one thing I heard is like, you know, if like one person says you're, you're a scumbag, like that's, it's okay. But if like 20 people are saying it, you know, yeah. you are a scumbag and that's, that's going to, trickle down and eventually people will see that you know and like you can fake an image and stuff but it it goes it goes a long way just being mm -hmm. good to your people good to people being around you and stuff i think that's that's like the biggest thing and you know like good things will happen to good people so, i have yeah. i have one final question because i also want to put it in the title of this podcast how how um what's your like advice to somebody getting signed by young la like one piece of advice that you would give like some hungry motherfucker out there um to me, honestly, the engagement, like having really good engagement on your page, if you have that, that's my, I don't really, cause like I do a lot of recruiting myself, right? Like I, I'm involved in like pretty much the most, like our top people that we've signed, like I've pretty much reached out or, or been a part of that. There's a, you know, there's other few people in the company that have done that too, but for the majority, like it's me. Uh, but when I go on somebody's page, I don't even look at how many followers they have or right, I, I go good. straight to, I need the comment section. You know, yeah. and I go through the comment, like I'll go, I'll go through it because like, oh shit, like 400 comments. All right, cool. Like, let me go through them. If it's all emojis, then I'm bouncing. Yeah. But if I was, like, was going to mention that yeah, too. If it's legit people and like they're actually talking like, like legit, like feedback on your posts and stuff. Like that's to me, even if you have 8,000 to 10,000 followers, but you're getting like two, 300 comments and they're legit comments. You know, I'll bring yeah. You cause they cause I've noticed like people have caught on to that and now they're faking comments, but it seems legit <laughs> where there's this kind of community of people mm -hmm. support system. It's like, yeah, this, <laughs> yeah. And there's like hundreds of people that are all part of this, like quote unquote support system. And I go snooping sometimes yeah. just cause like I'm curious and I went on someone's post and I looked at his comments cause I'm like, how does this have like 800 comments? That's fucking wild. And I just scrolled, like I just looked at the I top. might know who you're talking about, but obviously we're not going to say All that. right. Yeah. <laughs> Is, and there was, one guy who left three comments mm -hmm. on his post and then the original poster responded to each one of those comments and the guy who commented responded back and on each it's one like of those thread. comments, there was like 40 comments on each one. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, so that's 120 comments between the original poster and one other dude. And I so bet that's, if you go to his profile, it's the same thing. And I did. I did exactly that and it's the exact same shit. Yeah. It'll be like people will comment like, like two fire emojis and then they'll re-comment and say like you look great here bro and then they'll re-comment <laughs> and say when you come in a blah 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 yeah and and the original poster will respond and be like like you're so handsome bro i want to kiss you and then they'll <laughs> respond back and be like nah you're the handsome one bro and then they'll respond back yeah. and be like kissing emoji and it just goes back and forth and companies will fall for it i know, know so. like all the time but like with us too like obviously we'll sign people that you know like we shouldn't have you know and mm -hmm. and i i think that's fine like We'll, we'll give out, like, you know, three-month trial contracts here and there. Yeah, um, see if someone can prove themselves. See, yeah, and, yeah. like, if you have those three months, we, we're, we're straight up very transparent from you, like, from the start. Like, hey, if you hit these kind of numbers, we'll, we'll keep you on the team, add a salary, give you a contract, but these are your 
you have three months to prove yourself and if you don't you're out and yeah I and sometimes so, we'll so get hate sometimes about we'll that. get yeah, hate yeah. when they get kicked off it was like bro like we told you like you gotta hit this many orders per month and if you don't hit it how's like yeah because there was you know, a big we gave thing. you a chance and most other companies might not even give you that chance so and there was a big thing like it must have been over a year ago at this yeah, point so time. this is like a long time ago but there was like some heat against young la because it's like oh you dropped all these people it's like what actually happened is you signed all these trials at the same time and half of them this. proved themselves and half of them didn't. And the ones that didn't, you'd made it clear. These are the parameters. Exactly. And if you don't meet the parameters, then like you're off. We give you straight instructions. Like is, hey, there's these numbers or you're out. And then some people will also be like, I made the brand $10,000. Like, you know, like, but like, bro, like you really like, they'll say that I made the brand $10,000. was like, that's sales, bro. Like if you made $10,000 in sales, like you're not making the brand $10,000. Like mm -hmm. I have so many other expenses on top of that. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, if it's ten thousand dollars, you like what actually nah, came into all that ten thousand went straight to your pocket. Bro. That's what people think, yeah, dude. Which yeah, is no, crazy. Like you know, running a business is like you could be paying you guys, employees, product. Product cost is insane. Like Shopify fees, this and that. Like at the end of the day, if like if you made like ten thousand dollars, like way less than a thousand dollars came to Young LA, you know. And then there's like pieces after that too. So yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't understand that like normal business thing, like. You know, if 10,000 is like, oh, like maybe 5,000 went to their pockets, like does not work like that. You right, know, especially right. with a big company, like you have so many expenses, yeah. you know, like it's crazy. I'm sure you're, and you'll yeah. see that when like Boulevard yeah. starts going, like, you know, like. Yeah, it's like, like, no, like, especially in the beginning, like just what I've noticed is like, you're not even getting like a little bit of profit. It's like, you're mainly in the red exactly. <laughs> and you're just trying to stay afloat. Yeah. It's when like, you, I'm when not actually think, making this. When you think of like the big numbers, you're like, oh, like I'm selling for $30. It's costing me like 10. Oh, mm. probably like 20 will come to my pocket, you know? But then when you actually do the selling, you're like, oh, there's $2 went here. Yeah, yeah. $3 dollar went, went over here. Three bucks over here. Oh, and shipping costs. Oh, manufacturing costs. And exactly. then it dwindles down to yeah. like a dollar profit. And you're exactly. like, all right, awesome, bro. Yeah. And we do free shipping across the board on our website. And like, obviously, we're taking that hit, right? Like, yeah, yeah the customer's not paying for that, but we're taking that whole hit. So Even international? International, we still take a hit um, on our side, like, 25% because I want to build that base and mm -hmm. I still want to capture those customers, but obviously we're not going to take a huge, huge cut on that, right. but we still take a hit uh, just because I want to build those markets out. Cause next year we are looking for a European distribution. Um, yeah. So we'll have hopefully early Q1 of next year. We'll have European, Let me run that European. <laughs> Let me run that over there. You're Europe. about to uh, unlock the other 95% of the world population. That's fucking yeah, bro, once, once Europe starts going, I think that's going to be huge for us because we still get a good amount of like if you look at the chart on like drop days like yo Europe is popping well, um, yeah. <laughs> and, and it'll Germany. be popping even more once people don't have to pay like double digits for shipping yeah it's just shipping and plus the customs are just insane mm -hmm. um, like stuff ordering if you order stuff from Europe to the US you're you're not paying any customs unless you ordered more than 80, uh, $850 but it's not like that when it goes from here to Europe because mm. you know the European government wants to get that money and you end up paying the customer has to take care of that cost and it just adds up being too much so yeah mm -hmm. that's fucking sick yeah all right well we're an hour 30 yeah. let's wrap it up oh, yeah. um really quick yeah. Yeah. Hour 30. Yeah. Okay. um really quick i wanted to because i didn't say so if you guys want this glassware um support his dad lemonsoda.com and then the instagram is lemon soda la it made my seltzer yes. taste amazing yeah shout out to my dad he's He's a big. He's still on a, still grinding, bro. Like he's damn. still grinding. He's dude. He's such a big, big part of like. So he's he like he's in the warehouse every day with us now too, and like he takes so much off my play and Robbie's play, and like he's a hustler. He grinds hard, and yeah, like I dope. owe so much of like how we run the company to him, and like he has a very different mentality, you know. But at the same time, like he grinds and like he distilled that into us. So if you buy any glasses, it'll mean a lot to me. So yeah. Lemonsoda.com. Get them for your mom or your dad. Like, yeah. And they're yeah, good. Mother's, mother's Day. Good birthday like Mother's present. Day gift or Warm, some shit. Yeah. Yeah. Is Father's when's Day. Mother's Day? September? Oh, it's his no, mom. Mother's, mother, yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, no, Mother's Day is oh, in like that, March. Oh, wait, that's on? my mom's birthday. September. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> no, it's, it's been gone. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, okay. Um, let's, yeah. Fucking thank you for okay. coming on, dude. It's dude, yeah, dope. Thank you, bro. I had really, it was a good yeah, conversation. I thought we were like 45 minutes in. Like, this is crazy. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, so if you guys want to support him, fucking buy some Young LA. Um, <laughs> yeah. Use code Germer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's fucking dope. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thanks Thanks for thank you for having on, me. I'm so excited for the rest of this weekend. We're going to. Oh, yeah. Business meeting only. Business meeting only. Meeting only yeah. Also, sir. Boulevard coming soon. Yes, sir. Boss Boulevard. man's right here. He said it so. Dude, the pair that we just got yeah. in the middle. We, like, got, yo, we got CG, a special pair. The, the glasses are top quality, and you guys are going to love them. Like, 
We're spending money on these glasses. They're not like bro, cheap Bro, that's shit. what I've been saying. These fucking like, guys are like, bro, glasses are $2 to make. What no, the fuck? No, bro. Like, the unit cost behind some of these glasses is insane. We're not, we're not like, they're like titanium, this and that. We're not fucking around with like yeah. the quality. So it's like, you'll you'll see, like, you'll feel, when you feel it in your hands, it's like, it's going to be worth the money. Yeah. Like, we're not going to sell them for cheap, obviously. Like, you know, because it's I mean, like, it's way better, pol- it's way better quality than a pair of Oakley's I bought. And those, that's like a well known. I think I bought those for like, I don't know, $150 or something. And yeah. that was like plastic. These yeah, are like fucking titanium yeah, and they like grip legit. your head. And we didn't, we did not like, if we were like, Hey, people want this much money, money per pair, like cost wise. We're like, let's do it. You know? Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm excited for Boulevard. It's going to be Yeah. Sad. That's dope. But yeah. All you right. Get a tattoo. Yes, I will. Very soon. I got to get this retouched tat. too. Yeah. yeah. He's um, out. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.